when we see a graph with this wave-like shape, we know it's going to be either a sine or a cosine graph. We can get the amplitude and the midline quite easily. And then B is the number of cycles that will be completed in 360 degrees. I'm going to talk specifically a little bit more about whether it's a sine or cosine graph. And that has to do with this horizontal translation or horizontal shift. Now, we know that if it's a sine graph, we normally go up at the midline, and that point is typically on the y-axis. So if we are looking at a sine graph, we're looking to see how far did that graph shift either to the right or it also could have shifted to the left. A cosine graph we know typically has a maximum on the y-axis. So we're looking at how far did that maximum shift either to the right or to the left. To generate a sinusoidal equation based on the graph, we're first going to take a look at what's the scale that we're using on both the y-axis and the x-axis. In the first graph, I can see that I have a scale of 1 on the y-axis, and if this is 90, it means that every tick mark is 30 degrees, 30, 60, 90, etc. I'm going to use those maximum and minimum values to quickly figure out where my midline is, and then I'm going to draw that in here just so I can visualize. And then I can also, because this is a scale of 1, I can also quickly figure out what's my amplitude, and I can and fill that in here. I know that because I begin the graph on the midline, my next cycle is going to start here. So I have completed one full cycle in 120 degrees, which means that in 360 degrees, I'm going to be able to complete one, two, three cycles. 360 divided by 120 gives me that B value of three. And then the same thing with this one. I'm going to take a look at the scale. This time on the x-axis, if this is 180, halfway is 90, and so every tick mark is 45 degrees. I can see that I've completed one full cycle in 360 degrees, so that means I have a B value of one. My midline is at that one, and I have an amplitude of four. My first graph, I've gone ahead and set the same y-axis and scale, and the same scale and x maximum, and I'm also going to move this minimum to the negative 360 just so we can see what the graph looks like to the left of the y-axis. All right, there's four different equations that we could possibly generate from this graph. If it's a cosine graph, I'm looking to see where is that maximum, knowing that the standard y equals cosine x would be on the y-axis. So I can see in this case it's shifted. 90 degrees to the right, so we indicate that by this minus 90 means we're going to the right 90 degrees, or because my period is 120 degrees, if I'm going 90 degrees to the right, my period is maximum to maximum. So looking at this graph, from here to here has to be 120 degrees. So 90 to the right means I could also be going 30 to the left. Those two together have to add to my period. So the other choice is still a cosine graph, but we could also shift it to the left 30 degrees. If it's a sine graph, I'm looking to see where are we going up on the midline. I don't want to choose this point because you can see we're going down on the midline. So right here, I can see I've shifted 60 degrees to the right, which is represented by this. My period is 120, so that also means I could have shifted 60 degrees to the left, and we can see that here. So this is also a shift on the midline, which would be at 1, 60 degrees to the left. So once you get your period, you're looking at if it's a cosine graph, where did that maximum shift to? It's easiest to take a look at what, where does it shift to the right, and then know that to the left, those two numbers have to total the period. Sine graph, we're looking at where is it going up on that midline, and again, the shift to the right plus the shift to the left has to equal the period. Now, this happens to be a matching question in your textbook, but those are the four equations we could generate, and then you can see which one happens to correspond to it. And then when we go to graph this, you can see that there's four equations I actually put in here, but we only have that one graph. I'm going to go back in here and show you. So you can see there's all four equations, all producing exactly the same graph. Now, as soon as you press cosine, a bracket will automatically pop up, and so you have to put three, and then remember just to put that horizontal translation in bracket. So you're going to have another bracket, and then at the end, close the bracket on the horizontal translation, and then close the bracket on that whole piece here. The midline is going to be outside of the bracket. Now I'm going to do the same thing with my next one. So if it's a cosine graph, I'm looking at where did that maximum shift to here. If it's a sine graph, we can see that right now we're going up, so there is no shift in that particular case.
Similar in the second one, I've gone in and put my mode into degrees because we're working in degrees, and then I've set an appropriate window, but I've gone the same distance on the negative x-axis as well as the positive one. And then I can see here that again, there's four possible equations if I see that wave-like pattern. If it's a cosine graph, I'm looking at this point here. My period is 360 degrees, so that means this here is halfway between zero and 180, that's 90, so I know it's shifted 90 to the right, or 360 minus 90 gives me my horizontal shift to the left. My sine graph, because I'm looking at where is it going up on the midline, and that happens to be right on the y-axis where the sine graph typically would be, means that in this particular case there is no shift left or right. So there's three possible equations in this particular one. Because there's no horizontal shift on the sine graph, make sure when you put this in your calculator, a bracket will pop up as soon as you press sine. You have to make sure you close it because that vertical translation, the midline, needs to not be in brackets. And then you can see what happens when we graph it. Even though there's three equations in there, all three of those equations tend to produce the same graph.